Generations of Realism. I'm Bill Endersky, curator of Salm Gundy here in New York. The exhibition starts with earlier members of our club, as well as non-members that were very influential in teaching artists their craft, and then those artists teaching other students the craft. Lineage talks about the history of artist, teacher, and student, and it really goes over how we as artists learn from our, our master or our teacher and how that tradition just continues on. So we started with generation one. These are the teachers that learned in Paris and Munich at the very sort of beginning of the 1900s. You can see beautiful examples of some of the work here. Here's an enchance. My name is Patricia Watwood, and I'm the first vice president of the Salma Gundy Club, and I helped create this show with Bill and Dursky, helping bring in a lot of the contemporary artists. One of the themes that we wanted to highlight is how artists do not actually often arise singularly out of nowhere, but they usually come out of a school or a group of philosophers or a group of teachers who work in community and collaborate. The Salma Gandhi Club is a great place for this kind of collaboration and connection, and we wanted to show how many artists in the world of realism have woven through this club. For example, Norman Rockwell would often stay in the boarding room when we still kept rooms for artists in the upstairs. And when he was in New York, he would live here at Salma Gandhi Club. I love the luminosity and color in this painting, in particular how the skin tones of the face aren't even really skin tones. They're full of reds and greens and blues in the shadow. But then from a distance, it looks like the skin tone and shadow, but full of vibrant color. So artists have learned um, in what they call studios or ateliers, and a typical atelier project is to draw the human figure nude. Um, obviously, because it was uh, early in this, uh, they used to wear modesty belts. Um, but they would work doing charcoal on a textured paper. And so you can see that here again on Schultz. This is a work by Howard Pyle, an important illustrator from the mid-century, who is also a Salma Gundy artist. Dramatic figure, standing figure, portraiture was an important part of any realist artist tradition. The earliest members of Salma Gundy were illustrators because before the wide-scale use of photography um, in magazines and newspapers, they had to rely on artists doing the drawings manually. And so most uh, artists um, in the early part of the 19th century were engaged in illustration. And so one of the most famous is Dean Cornwell, and he was a member here at Salma Gundy. Here's a beautiful double portrait by the artist. I really love, again, you can see just the character um, of, the, of the painting and the drawing, and you can sense each of the uh, sitters' like moods. I love her, she looks a little bored. I think that's fun. And he's like, you know, with his cigar. I love that one too. These are two of my favorite paintings in the show that we have, both by William Merritt Chase, very important American painter based here in New York City in the village. This was his daughter, Alice Chase Sullivan, and his son-in-law. So they're both painted from life, 1911 and 1913. Chase exhibited here at the Salma Gandhi Club very regularly. Continuing the illustrator theme, you can see N.C. Wyeth, also a member of the Salma Gundy Club at one point. Um, you know, illustration was, was the key. Uh, you can see incredible, like dynamic drawing from the artist. I love this one. It's, it's just incredible. I like that there is literally the size of the horse. There's the same amount of almost nothing, um, equal in space. Plus the frame, I just want to point out. 
is just incredible. Frames are so important to an artist, um, and I encourage all artists to think carefully about their frames. Jay Alden Weir was a member of the Selma Gundy Club. Um, he was one of the early American Impressionist artists, um, well uh, known in that he used, uh, especially painting in Connecticut, um, he used colors where each of the colors had a lot of white added to it, which gave every his entire palette a lightness and an airiness. Um, and you can see this incredibly well shown in the landscapes that he did. You can see how beautiful, even the late sun, it's not like strong, but because everything is already bright and light. And, you know, he wasn't just painting landscapes. He also, you know, he also painted figures. This one in particular is a, a young, young child. This one from Weir is uh, actually held by a private collector. You can see this one does not have as much white in it, um, and it was probably likely sort of in the transitional point before Weir added white to everything in his palette. Harvey Dunn, another illustrator and Samuel Gundian, produced this work likely for a magazine. Um, magazines at that time when they did use photographs, would have to have the illustrations quite large and then replicate them for the magazine quite small. So you can see here, this looks like an Alaskan themed article. Uh, you can see two people riding with the dog sled. Another N.C. Wyeth. Um, most people don't know because N.C. Wyeth always used N.C. that his name is actually Newell uh, Converse. Um, and so hearing it, people are like shocked. They didn't even know he had a first and middle name <laughs> just because some people are always associated with their initials. You can see this one here, A Song of the South. is a wonderful outdoor scene. Um, the illustrator tended to use black and white and grays uh, for a lot of his work. So lineage continues in Samagani's Skylight Gallery. And in this gallery, we have work of contemporary artists and artists of the 20th century who are important teachers to contemporary artists. I'm really proud of this particular wall because it has work by Richard Schmidt, Daniel Green, Nelson Shanks, Max Ginsburg, Bert Silverman, who were just a few of them, but very important artists in the 20th century. When I came to New York to study in 1996, you really had to seek out these special individuals who could offer this kind of training. And so for a realist painter, these particular teachers were lions and they were precious resources who taught this tradition. And some of them have passed on, a few of them are still with us, and I'm really excited to show how important their teaching was to the current generation of realists. This work is by Nelson Shanks, and I think it's just extraordinary. I was actually in his studio in Gramercy Park when he was painting this, and the model wore this extremely strange fox stole, um, and he paints everything entirely from life. The model's name was Eden, and I think he just captured her beauty, but then this very strange detail, and he loved that combination of strangeness, humor, and beauty in his work. This large and beautiful pastel is a really beautiful work by an important American teacher, Harvey Dinnerstein. Did figurative work through the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s, keeping this tradition alive. Harvey passed away this past summer and he taught many of the people who are showing here at this club. This is one of my favorite paintings by the artist Burton Silverman. Silverman is still alive, still making vibrant portraits, does a lot of portraiture, and he also did work in the American Civil Rights Movement going down to the South to document the Civil Rights Movement in the 60s. This beautiful painting is by Max Ginsburg, still a vibrant and active teacher in American realism and portraiture, and several of his students are also showing in this exhibit. Beautiful painting by Max Ginsburg. 
This painting is one of my very favorites in the show. It's by an artist very dear to my heart, Martha Mayer Erlbacher, who taught at the New York Academy of Art where I did my master's. She was the only female artist that I got to study with in the 90s and early 2000s. And she really shaped a generation of people thinking about myth, archetype. She was a powerful and dynamic teacher. I absolutely love this painting by Nelson Shanks of the important American actress, Marissa Tomei. This was painted from life in Nelson's studio. Absolutely adored painting Marissa, who was a brave and powerful actress. I love this beautiful little painting. This is by artist Abraham Ginsberg, who is the father of the artist Max Ginsberg, who whose work we saw. And this is the artist's wife napping, also Max's mom. Frank Mason was an important artist um, and teacher in the early 1900s on. He was taught at the Art Students League for many years. Mason was also a Salma Gundian. Brandon Soloff, an artist who's also a Salma Gundian, did this piece called Model J from this year. In my opinion, it's so far absolutely one of his best paintings that he's produced. The tones and the skin, the textures, they're really incredible. I mean, you can see how built up the textures are. It, you know, Brandon is known for his incredible fine drawing uh, that has character and detail, um, and especially his noses. Like Brandon is a nose guy, and you can definitely see it here. This sculpture bust is by Salmagundi artist Fred Brownstein of the teacher Narina Simi. Narina Simi taught in Florence, keeping alive the tradition from master painter Pietro Anagoni and taught another whole generation of artists working in Florence and now in the United States. This is by the artist Dan Thompson. Dan Thompson was a New York Academy trained artist. He also studied under Nelson Shanks, and he's now the director at Nelson School Studio in Caminati in Philadelphia. He is the teacher to other artists in this exhibit, including Jia Fang Lu, who studied under Dan Thompson and also Carrie Dunn in this exhibit. This is a painting by artist Kathy Anderson, Salmagundi artist who is a student of Richard Schmidt, who we have included in the show. This next painting is by John Ferriano, teaches now at the Art Students League and was a student of Frank Mason, who we have in the exhibit. This work is by an Italian artist, also a Salmagundi artist named Alessandra Marucci, who was a student of Norina Simi in Florence. This is by Lisa Egeli, who's part of an American family of Egeli, Cedric Egeli, Anastasia Egeli, all have uh, been strongly connected through Salma Gundy, beautiful plein air landscape. This is Elizabeth Zanzinger, student of Juliet Aristides at the Aristides Atelier. This one is by artist Rodrigo Matteo, who was a student of Jacob Collins at the Grand Central Atelier. This is by artist Carrie Dunn, who now teaches at Studio and Caminati and was a student of Nelson Shanks. This is by my alumni colleague, Lisa Lebowski from New York Academy of Art. She was a student, also a student of Martha Erlbacher, we have in the show, and Wade Schumann and Harvey Citron. This is by Wendy Green Caparelli, who is a portrait artist in beautiful pastel. She was Daniel Green's wife and student and does contemporary portraiture. This is by American realist artist Bo Bartlett, who is a student of Nelson Shanks and Andrew Wyeth. This is by artist Marshall Jones, who teaches here at the Salma Gundy Club and is a Salma Gundy artist. This is one of my favorite paintings in the show by artist Bo Bartlett. It's a study for a large narrative painting. It's called Study for Crowd Scene. Bo 
often does large-scale figurative work, he will use friends and neighbors from his hometown of Columbus, Georgia, and gets them to pose to create these epic and grand stories that feel so much a part of our everyday life. This is by a young artist, Grace Flatt, who's a student of Juliet Aristides, also of Anthony Ryder. She was herself a burn victim and has done a beautiful series of work of people who have been resilient um, survivors of burn victims. We have work also by Luis Alvarez Ruhr. He was a student of Nelson Shanks. A painting by Noah Buchanan, Samagani artist who did the library doors here at the club and was a student of Martha Erlbacher and fellow colleague from the New York Academy of Art. Work by Ian Factor, student of Ray Kinsler. And this one is by New York Academy professor Wade Schumann. Work on paper, it's ink, ballpoint ink, acrylic, uh, very delicate on a large sheet of paper. It's really beautiful. This is a painting by Salmagandhi artist Garen Baker. It was done in the same studio as the painting by Max, Max Ginsburg. He was a student of Max's and David LaFell and Bert Silverman and Harvey Dinnerstein. This is by artist Julia Aristides, who's written a number of amazing books on realism. She was a colleague of mine studying with Jacob Collins and also a student of Myron Barnstone, an important teacher now as well. My own painting, this one's called Venus Awakes, and I did a special handmade custom frame made out of circuit boards, including circuit boards in the inside of the painting as well, so it's part of the theme of the work. We want to give a special shout out to our sponsor for this video, New Wave Art. New Wave Art designs and manufactures a wide range of studio and plein air gear for artists. Salma Gundy is excited to introduce the Salma Gundy Traditional Artists Palette. This palette was designed in collaboration with us using our historic palette collection. Will be manufactured by New Wave Art in Pennsylvania. You can learn more at newwaveart.com.